So on the other side of the aisle, on the other side of the aisle, we've got Bernie Sanders. It is such a stark difference to see like two people in the same body, same government body, be so massively different from each other. You really wonder if we have like two separate, like not even parties, two separate governments. Like one guy is talking about, we need to put money in the working family's hands now. That's it. End goal. All of a fuck it, yo. All of a, all of a sudden, all of a sudden now, People clowning on Bernie Sanders for doing good. That's how low of a bar that we've set for, like, decency in America. You go above that bar, fuck you. You go below that bar, fuck you. You just meet the bar, eh, we'll let it slide. We'll give you one of them, uh, we'll give you a key and peel. We'll give you one of them, Gordon. Eh. Did I criticize Republicans for using cons- uh, reconciliation to give tax breaks to uh, billionaires? Yes. If they want to criticize me for helping to feed children who are hungry or senior citizens who are isolated and alone and don't have enough food, they can criticize me. That's right. That's right. Man of the people. We picked the wrong president, ladies and gentlemen. I should be hearing President Sanders right now. Details, and I criticize Republicans, yeah, for using reconciliation to give tax breaks to billionaires to create a situation where large profitable corporations now pay zero in federal income taxes. Yes, I did criticize them for that. And if they want to criticize me, for helping to feed children who are hungry or senior citizens in this country who are isolated and alone and don't have enough food, they can criticize me. I think it's the appropriate step forward. In the details, and I criticize Republicans. Yeah. So if you don't know, people are shitting on Bernie Sanders. Not a lot of people, but obviously the fucking Republican colleagues of his. Shitting on him for selling a t-shirt to help fucking people like with Meals on Wheels, donated everything. Did that shit himself. He recognized, which goes a little bit further, and as a as a piece, I want to talk about uh, a little bit later after we cover these next few things because it all comes into one group, and I want to make sure that we have our ideas centered and proper before we move forward. And if anybody's asking, yes, I will be running ads. I did say that I will be starting running ads after this stream, so this will be the last stream in which you will not get a top of the hour every hour ad. So be glad. Yeah, but you showed up before I started becoming a fucking court capitalist. Contractual obligation must run these ads. Did I criticize Republic? Uh, so he saw this meme popping off. Immediately said, how can I use that to help people in need? And then just did it. Didn't ask nobody. Didn't say nothing. Just did it. That's what government should be. That's the antithesis of government. No, wrong. That's wrong word. That is government at its core. I see people in need. How can we help them? Let's just do it. And we fighting over that shit. One of the things that has uh, seemed to have been a, a distraction from the pain you're talking about is you on the internet uh, over the past <laughs> week. The fact that you have become a meme, uh, the picture of you sitting at the inauguration uh, in your mittens, thousands of memes, such as some of them on the screen. I have to show you some of my personal favorites. Demi Moore, she put uh, your picture in her famous ghost scene. Jennifer Grey, you know, she played baby in Dirty Dancing. She put you in yep, the corner, editor. And, you know, you're even a selfie with us on election night. So um, my question is, are you having as much fun with this as the world is? There goes that whole myth about the mainstream media and them pushing the fucking narrative. They'd rather talk about a, a meme that's going viral than actual issues. To which he then turns that conversation into something that can address an actual issue people are, are dealing with. Lack of food. Lack of funds for housing. Let's do something to help the people. We picked the wrong president, yo. I am. And I am. And not only are we having fun, what we're doing here in Vermont uh, is we're going to be selling around the country uh, sweatshirts and T-shirts and all of the money that's going to be raised, which I expect will be a couple of million dollars, will be going to programs like Meals on Wheels mm-hmm. that feed uh, low-income senior citizens. So it turns out actually to be a, a good thing and not, not only a fun thing. One of the-
turns out to not only be a fun thing, but a good thing. The power of that man to decide, like any other, like not any other, but like a, a Republican that got a meme out of it, they would be putting it on T-shirts and pocketing the fucking money, saying, oh, it's going to go here and then take 10% off the top. Nah, all that money's going to people in need. I'm turning this moment into something that we, that's a people's movement. That's the people for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders for the people. That's how you do it. That should be every, I shouldn't hear this right, left, bullshit drivel going on about this, that, and other, and wedge issues, and trying to get elected, and worrying about it. Like, how do we help people? We're still in a pandemic. That shit's not over yet. How do we help people? How can I turn this into something that does more good as much as it is funny? Immediately. How long did that take? Inauguration was on the 21st. Memes started popping off about the 22nd. Immediately. We, we helping people. Where is that? That's my goal when I get into politics. What can I use with my influence? Can I point something? Can I point like, all right, I know money low. We need help for these people. Let's go do this, that, and the other. That's it. And then I'm going home and I'm going to sleep. I could give, a, I could give two shits about what Ted Cruz is saying right now. He don't care about nothing but the people because he's hired as a public official, a servant. And he served quite literally meals to his people. Well, we here worried about <laughs> voter fraud and election integrity. Well, I don't know what the word compromise means. I know that working families are in living today in more economic desperation than since the Great Depression. And if Republicans are willing to work with us to address that crisis, welcome. Let's do it. What I said earlier, what I said earlier, who's the other side of the aisle for me? People who are willing to address the issues head on. I'm not here for that, for that, for none of that. You said this, I said that, blah, 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 none of that. I'm here to help the people first. Then we could, we could settle our, our wedge issues. But people are in need. So if you're on board to help people, come on. But if you're going to talk some other shit, I'm not here for that. But what we cannot do is wait weeks and weeks and months and months to go forward. We have got to act now. That is what the American uh, people want. Now, as you know, reconciliation, which is a Senate rule, was used by the Republicans under Trump to pass massive tax breaks for the rich and large corporations. It was used as an attempt to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and what we are saying is you use it for that. That's fine. We're going to use reconciliation, that is 50 votes in the Senate plus the vice president, to pass legislation desperately needed by working families in this country right now. You did it. We're going to do it. But we're going to do it to protect ordinary people, not just the rich and the powerful. Ooh, that's why you can't play. That's why you can't be nice and play softball. Oh, I want everybody to work on this. They don't have that goal in mind. That's why, like, regardless of political affiliation, my thoughts always end up on the left. Because it seems like the only people who ever open their mouths and actually say what they mean are people on the and what's left. Your That's why. They do everything. I mean, this is not, you don't have the time to sit around, you know, weeks on impeachment and not get vaccines into the arms of people. You don't have time to worry about vaccines and not deal with the fact that children in America are going hungry. We got to break through this old approach that the Senate takes years and years to do anything. We got a crisis right now. We can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. The American people are hurting and they want us to act. That's what our candidates ran for in this election. That's what the guys in Georgia won on. And we have got to reaffirm the faith of the American people in government that we can respond to their pain. Boom. I know I just said that out of my own mouth. That's my goal. Now I'm hearing a senator say it. That should be everybody's goal, top to bottom. I'm not here for the political bullshit. I'm here. You elected me. Now I'm giving it on my. Pro I'm giving to my promises. Not on the shit. You know. Oh, I said this to be elected, and now that I'm here, it's gonna be really hard to unseat me. No, I'm gonna do everything in my power to get you what you need, and then I'm out. I'm dipping. Bye. I'm done. You need health care. Medicare for all. We passed it. I'm good. I'm done. My job's done. 
Fixing the issues of the common, ordinary people will eventually create this capitalistic utopia that they want. They just hate the fact that working people might actually get a slice of the pie. Like I've always said, that I know that there's a thing that I talked about a couple of weeks ago about uh, employees who get like a share in the stock. That should be it. If I'm keep if I'm keeping your buildings clean, and people are walking into them saying, "Ah, this feels like a great place to do business." I'm in the IBM building, and everything looks clean and tidy. Give me a give me a stock. Like, didn't I help you close that deal? If I didn't throw out that garbage, your shit would be smelling like shit in that office. They'd be like, what's that smell? Can we move outwards? They move outwards. I can't really hear you, bro. I'll just leave. Like, I'm, I'm not dealing with this. I helped you. Everybody who works for a corporation helps that corporation close those deals to make more money. Where's our say in what we're getting here? Where's our say in how much money the CEO just boosted up? Like, why are these stockholders so interested in the profits of the business, but not the workers of the business. Why is it that we have people who are sitting in government right now that refuse to address these issues because, oh, God forbid you make 10 million less, you're still sitting on 60. I'll take a crisp 20 right now. Fuck you mean. I'll take a crisp 20 right now. But prove to me that by electing you, that you're not just full of shit and you're not just going to line your pockets with corporate money. Prove to me right now that your genuine soul is about the people of this country and not just about a, a, a select few who might toss you a hundred grand to say no to a deal. I could give less of a shit about that. My people are in hurting. My people are in pain. They are hurting right now. And the longer that we wait to address these issues, they might as well not just be addressed. So why are we running? Why are we in charge? Why are we in charge of anything? Just let anarchy, if that's the case. If we don't sit there and say that these are problems, if wage inequality, income inequality, if we're not saying that there are massive, massive issues that we cannot address, then we should not be in charge to address these issues. There should be a new body in place to address these issues from a systemic point to make sure that not only does it stop, but it doesn't happen again. They don't want to level the playing field because they like the money. That shit feel good in their hands. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of having to be like, oh, Bernie Sanders is the greatest. Like, why is that not just everyone's point of view? Help the people. Because there's a power play and people want to stay in power and have their president and enact these tax cuts and let the coal and oil industry destroy the earth. And then when it's all burnt up and all that money means nothing, they'll be like, oh, I guess we kind of fucked up there. Bernie Sanders for the people, ladies and gentlemen. I, I I don't get what it's like to be a politician and not have the greater... Like, I could understand having less enthusiasm for people because, you know, in the back of your head, you literally can't solve everyone's issues, but at least the big, overwhelming issues that we can address. And now the Democrats have all of it. So where the fuck is the solutions? <clears throat> now the Democrats have all of it. Where the fuck are the solutions? I'm going to say that one more time. Now the Democrats have all of it. Where the fuck are the solutions? I don't care if this shit takes months to pass. That's all we focused on, though. And we're not focused on anything else. Now, the impeachment of Donald Trump and this possible conviction is to punish seditious traitors to the country. There is a symbolic and moral imperative to have that pass. That's a whole other object. But we could do two things at once. We could walk and chew gum. I don't know what the word compromise means. Okay, I did have a link selected here. I'm trying to figure out why it's not. Okay, so the big point. Bernie Sanders made a sitting Bernie meme sweater sold for $45 each, immediately sold out and gave 100% of the proceeds to Meal on Wheels without robbing anyone in the process, proving once again that voluntary charity is far better than the tax and spend model. All I want is to be able to see where my money ends up. I don't care if it's taxes, charity, whatever. I don't even mind paying them. I just want to see how my money is actually making an, impa an impact. That's far more likely to happen when you have a choice whether or not to give to them or to give to someone else instead. A provider will always be more accountable to you than an armed robber. Fair enough. 
fair enough. Um, so there was this big Twitter post that I wanted to end the thought on. Uh, the I wanted to end this thought on. Uh, I can't find it right now, so we're just gonna have to go here with it. The meme that Bernie Sanders uh got uh uh more popular by the meme that Bernie Sanders pretty much created is not just a meme. There's an underlying argument about it, and it's something that I need to express to you. You've probably seen it passed around a few times on social media. I'm going to make that point very clear to you now. That meme represents the exact disconnect between working class people and the fanfare that the Democratic Party was trying to pull up here. It represents the actual the actual need to be relatable to the people that you are fighting for. Who gives, like, it, he came not with, like, a, a suit and tie, big gown, everything. Look, this is nice and all. This is what he said. This is nice and all, but I got to get back to the Senate because I need to pass working class relief bills, like, ASAP. And the fact that that went viral, above all else that went viral that day, spoke to how much the working class people connect with somebody who's actually down to earth and actually gives a shit about our problems. That doesn't apply his thought to the 1%, the rich and powerful, doesn't believe in trickle-down economics. That shows us that there was solidarity in him and his ideals more than anything else because they apply to the majority of Americans. That's why it's so weird to me that Trump has a cult around him because he could give less of a shit about you people yet you spend all of your time and energy like applauding this man for doing absolutely bare minimum nothing. That man does not care about you and you put all of your effort into saying, yeah, he's for the working class, he's for us. Like, no, that, that man don't care. That man don't care. He does not give a shit. And somehow you've deluded yourself into believing that he gives a shit about you. I don't get that. I don't get how, where where did you miss the message? You you hate the rich and powerful for stealing from you, but applaud the rich and powerful guy for stealing from you. That man took all that money to investigate election fraud and just ran with it. And nobody's asking any questions about where that money went or what he did with it. It's just, oh, I guess it didn't work out. I guess I'm glad I shelled out $3,000 to help him figure out that it, there was nothing there in the first place. He conned you. He conned you. He robbed you. He stole from you. And somehow you're still advocating for him. So fuck Ted Cruz. Fuck Madison Cawthorn. And fuck anybody else who's still in this, in this denial stage about... about the fact that there was an insurrection on the Capitol that was brought about by Donald Trump's lies and his, and his cabinet of people who sat there with him and actually believed in him and believed him well enough to incite a fucking riot at the Capitol into which they could have killed people, to which people did die, and you still, at the end of the day, are like, that's not a problem. The radical left is a problem. Suck my dick, suck my dick. Like, you're fucking kidding me right now. You can't be serious. You can't be serious. That's not how we roll here. That's not how we roll, and it's never how we're going to roll. They need to be punished. They need to be convicted. And they need to be in that nice big federal prison cell. And we need to clear out the government from these wicked-ass people. Sorry, I'm getting pain in my side from screaming. It's just ridiculous to me. It's ridiculous. I don't, I, I can sit here and pretend like I have all the answers and that I believe in everything that everyone's, like, a common fucking sense place tells me. You got conned. You got robbed. You got fucking gypped. I hate that term. I know that's a bad term. I'm quite aware. You got gypped, and somehow you still think you're on the right side of history. Go fuck yourself. My dad stays screaming on the phone. <laughs> Can't believe it. My dad stays screaming on the phone. Anyway, 
that meme showed more about solidarity with the working class, and that's why it blew up. That's why it had so much momentum attached to it at the end of the day beyond anything else. That's why that shit keeps spiraling, because everybody clued in and said, look, that guy, even when he got, in theory, what he wanted, you know, because we, we said we hated him for selling out to the Democratic establishment, blah, 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 the DNC robbed him, this, that, and the other, he still stood there and said, I'm with the people, I'm not with this fanfare, I'm not with, this, with, this, with these, all these presentations, these singers, I'm here because I need to solve the actual issues of the American people, and that is it. That is all a government official should be doing. I understand the idea of hegemon, uh, hegemony and the idea of a one-party state, whatever, but at least at the, at the bare minimum, could every elected official have it within their goals to just solve the problems of the American people first before they let personal interests slip in? And now we're at a point where there's two sides to this coin where one cares about us and the other one just doesn't. And I don't know why people can't see that. I don't know why I'm even afraid to to even consider a run in politics. When I got nasty, dirty people out here saying the work, like the fact that they haven't even said, yeah, the seditious act was bad, but you know, they're saying the seditious act was bad. But the reason why the seditious act happened, well, you know, we should look into that. Fueling. Fueling the conspiracy theories consistently and aggressively. And that amount of nonsensical, bad faith acting, get them out. I'm done. Like, the moment you on that side, bro, here's what he's going to do. I'm going to sit y'all in a circle. We're all going to smoke a blunt. We're going to puff, puff, pass. And the moment you say that dumb shit, I'm just smacking you. Like, that's it. Like, like. Like, do I have to treat you like children? How are you elected officials? You've been there for a good amount of fucking time. Right? Like, you've been there a good amount of time. And yet, this is the hill you choose to die on. I, I can't fathom it. I can't fathom how Bernie Sanders ends up in the position that he's in while people like this sit in a little bit of a higher plane and say, eh, you know, people died at the Capitol, but it's not that bad. Yes, there was some slavery, but, like, that's <laughs> that's, that's where that ends. And it's, it's just dumb. It's dumb to me that, like, normal people don't, like, and when I say normal working class people, you know who I'm talking about. I'm surprised they don't run for office more often. Like, just point out, yo, have you actually done anything for us? Or have you just postured and collected money and then said, all right, I guess my job's done. I'm out of here. Like, ridiculous. Ridiculous to me that these people exist as, as the bar to which politics should be a discussion. When we got somebody like Bernie out there sitting there in the cold, in his mittens, just saying, I'm, yeah, this is nice and all, but can we uh, pass some bills, you know?